Do you want to start playing the Pokemon trading card game in 2023? You've probably heard how affordable, easy to learn, and fun it is. Well, you're in luck. This is my complete guide to playing the Pokemon TCG in 2023. My name's Luke. I've been playing the Pokemon TCG for over two decades now, and I've dedicated my entire YouTube channel to sharing the game with the world, so I can't wait to help you start your Pokemon TCG journey. There's probably never been a better time to start playing the Pokemon TCG. There are incredible products like the League Battle Decks and Trainer Toolkits, and the market is quite affordable. You'll see here this Regigigas deck only costs about $45, and it placed in the top 8 out of over a 1,000 players at a recent major event with tens of thousands of dollars on the line. These are some other high placing decks and popular archetypes and you'll see they're all pretty affordable and that's a reason why a lot of people are giving the game a shot right now. There's a diverse metagame with plenty of techs and variants of decks. So regardless what your favorite Pokemon is, what kind of decks you've played in other card games, I'm confident you'll find something that is right for you. The Scarlet and Violet base set releases March 31st, so get in now and you'll be here for the horizon of a brand new era of the Pokemon trading card game. In today's video, we'll talk about learning how to play, formats and rotations, what to buy, building your own decks, and where to play the game. Let's start with learning how to play. If you are brand new, you don't know how to play the Pokemon TCG at all, check out this video series on the official Pokemon website. It should take you about 25 minutes if you know nothing about the game to get through these videos and have an understanding of how to play your first game of the Pokemon trading card game. There's also a PDF rulebook. Links for all of this will be in the description. This is an up-to-date rulebook, but I suggest checking it out again in a few months when there's a new updated one for Scarlet and Violet because they usually uh, add some things and change some things when a brand new uh, block, when the newest video game's iteration of the card game comes out. Formats and rotations. Standard format is really the main format you're going to be concerned with. All of the regional events this year, all of the international events, even most unofficial local level events and world championships as well, all going to be standard format. So what is standard format? During every championship series season, Pokemon Organized Play removes older expansions from competition in the standard format with the goal of maintaining a healthy competitive environment. This rotation challenges existing players to create new strategies and enables new players to get involved. The current standard format as of January 2023 is D, Block, and On, and that is depicted by the D on the regulation mark area of the cards. So right now you can use D, E, F, and so on, and after rotation, that will change to E and On. As sets release, formats rotate and metagames develop. Some decks may become less viable or even obsolete. This is the nature of a trading card game, and you should know this going in. But, in my opinion, Pokemon TCG does a better job at keeping many decks, sets, and cards relevant compared to other major card games that I've played. Rotation as briefly mentioned in April 2021, cards with the D regulation mark will no longer be legal for play in the 2023 standard format. This is going to go into effect on April 14th, and on Pokemon TCG Live and assumingly Pokemon TCG Online, the standard format rotation will happen on March 30th to give everyone online a head start. If you're brand new, I suggest staying away from decks and sets with large quantities of D-block cards in them since these D-block cards will no longer be available, um, sorry, legal in standard format as of April 2023. So we'll see a deck like this Eternatus Weezing deck, which was recently uh, placed 33rd place at the regionals in Arlington, Texas. All of the X's depict cards that will no longer be legal after rotation happens in April 2023. So if this is a deck that you buy right now, uh, most of the deck will be absolutely gone from standard format because it's already been in standard format for years. 
But then if we look at a deck like this Lost Zone box, none of the main cards are going away. You still have all of your Lost Zone stuff, like Home Fee, Sableye, Cramorant. You still have the Mirage Gates, the Colorus' Experiment, because those cards are newer. Most of the cards in this deck, the core cards of it, are F blocks, so they'll even be here in another year's rotation. So this would be a great deck to build. What to buy? These are all of the sets that will contain mostly rotation-proof cards. However, the ones that I've faded out here, I wouldn't suggest buying uh, because it's just going to be better for you to buy the singles from those sets. Lost Origin and Silver Tempest are the newest sets right now, so they're still pretty good to buy packs of. Um, and then, of course, sets that come out after this video. So Crown Zenith will be coming out after I'm recording this video. Scarlet and Violet base sets a couple months down the line. So those will be good to buy as well. Do note, however, that Crown Zenith is mostly a reprint set and there will be cards in Crown Zenith with the D regulation mark since they're reprinting a whole bunch of cards with new arts from the entirety of the Sword and Shield block. It's much more a collector's set than it is a player's set. Scarlet and Violet will be a great set for players to buy. Remember how affordable I said these decks are? Well, they're not affordable if you are going to buy hundreds of dollars of booster boxes. If you want to build a large playable collection of cards and decks for the lowest price, buy single cards and sometimes products like the League Battle decks and the Trainer Toolkits. Essentially, shop on TCG Player, find the lowest prices for single cards, buy them there. Building decks. The first question I ask people when they want to build a deck is what is your goal? If you want to have fun, build creative decks and have exciting battles, by all means, do whatever the heck you want with your decks. But if you want to be the very best like no one ever was, I suggest starting with tier 1 decks that are proven to work so you can focus on your gameplay rather than the deck. A common mistake I see is players getting into the game and trying to make a homebrew rogue deck and they're frustrated because they're not playing perfectly and their deck isn't perfect either. So they have so many things just falling apart throughout the game and they get frustrated. It's much better to start with a proven to work built deck for you from somebody that's won a regional championships just take that deck that has already been proven to be good and learn how to play with that deck therefore you know the deck is good so any mistakes that you're making are your own fault and you can work on them to become a better player staples are cards that are going to be seen across um a lot of different archetypes. Regardless of what decks you're building, there are typically staple cards in every standard format that will be generally useful in most decks. Cards like Professor's Research, you get to draw cards. Ultra Ball, you get to search for a Pokemon. Luminion, you get to search for a supporter card. These are very general and non-specific cards that are going to be good in almost any sort of deck. And here's a list of staples. Um, I tossed 12 different cards onto the screen for the for this video. Uh, these are cards that are going to A, not rotate, because none of these have the D block on them. They're all E or F block. So these are all going to be good for at least another year plus if you buy them right now. Um, I've also put the quantities of how many cards, of how many copies of these cards you'll need to build any one deck. Um, so let's say you think you might want to build two decks to start out. I would probably buy eight Professor's Research, eight Ultra Balls, um, maybe uh, two Radiant Greninjas, but not every deck is going to need Double Turbo. Not every deck is going to need Path to the Peak, but these are generally useful cards that if you end up building a few decks, you'll be able to use all of these out of a few decks. So uh, definitely buy these cards on the screen to start out your collection. You're going to use them eventually. Let's talk about a few good beginner decks. These are going to be good beginner decks because of their price point, also because of the amount of cards that will stay in format after rotation, and also uh, some of these some of these decks will have multiple cards rotating out. Like so, this one has Quick Ball, Evolution Incense, Hyper Potion, um, that specific Duraludon V and Marnie. All of those cards are rotating out, but they're not very expensive. That's maybe like. 
three dollars worth of cards five dollars worth of cards max out of this deck or rotating out the rest will stay so this is a good beginner deck because of that uh, you'll have your deck be mostly rotation proof and this is a pretty simple deck to play you have two evolution lines of pokemon uh only two types of energy it's a pretty um straightforward line of play for this deck set up with arceus Power up your Duraludon VMAXs, smack your opponent with the big Duraludon VMAX with no weakness. And this is also a popular deck that you'll be able to find plenty of content online uh, with people playing them and teaching you how to play it as well. Same thing with Regigigas. This one's a little bit harder, but it's also a little more fun. Um, it gives you a, a, a streamlined goal of getting all of your Regis on the board so you can activate Regigigas' Ancient Wisdom. However, this one does have more cards that are rotating, like Aurora Energy, Capture Energy, Twin Energy, but it's also a lot cheaper. So if you wanted to buy this deck or build it online and play with it for a few months until rotation hits, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. And also Mew Genesect. This one's great because it also, there's the uh, Mew V Max League battle decks that are available, and those are like 20 to 30 bucks. And if you buy one of those, you'll get like 70% of the cards you need for this deck. Um, or you could just buy it all the singles on TCG player. But this is also a good deck because it's pretty rotation proof. It's very, very strong. And you have uh, pretty much one attacker, which is Mew V Max. So there's less choices to make throughout the game on which Pokemon to set up and whatnot. Uh, but I think you'll have a lot of fun learning the mechanics of the game with any of these three decks that I mentioned. Where to play? Local game stores. I just went on Twitter to find a few... Uh, examples of local game stores that have standard format uh, weekly events or special case tournaments or pre-releases. Um, so what I would suggest is joining, joining Twitter, following some people, maybe follow me, tournament organizers, other YouTubers, try to find a local Facebook group or a local Discord group, try to find a couple of friends that want to travel with you, and you'll start having a good time and finding plenty of tournaments to play in. Major events, these are official events, they're going to cost money to play in and you're typically going to have to travel to them unless you get lucky and one pops up right near you. And there's also international events, there's four of them a year, uh, one in each continent that has an official circuit for the Pokemon trading card game. There's usually about like 16 regionals a year and four internationals a year. Um, the registration prices vary from like $50 to $70. The prices, uh, I'm sorry, the prizes for first place at a regional are $5,000. And I think uh, international prizing is $10,000. And then at Worlds, it's like $25,000 for first place, I believe. But there's other uh, prizing that trickles down. And you also get championship points, which uh, helps you earn a World Championships invite. And then, of course, there's online casual play on the Pokemon trading card game online. It can be kind of frustrating to build up a collection on here because you're going to need to buy online codes and scan them and then trade them on the trade thing for the cards you want. So if you really want to play online, it's worth it. Um, I wouldn't suggest playing Pokemon TCG Live yet because that software has a lot of things wrong with it that needs to be fixed and i don't want to suggest anyone to start out their pokemon tcg journey with it uh so stick to pokemon tcg online for now if you want to play online and the good thing about playing ptcg online is that there is a website called play.limitlesstcg.com which has unofficial online events every single day sometimes these things have like 500 plus players in them i've ran a few myself that went very well and i've played in tons of these myself um, and you can play against some really great players in these too. Like you'll see Azul GG won that one on the right. Uh, so if you want to start getting competitive, uh, getting the feel for what a tournament might feel like, this is great. This is a great way to do it. So that was my complete guide to playing the Pokemon trading card game in 2023. If there's anything I left out, any questions you are leaving this video with, please leave it in the comments down below and or join my Discord and you can also ask the questions there and uh, myself or someone else will be happy to help. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon TCG content and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.